Atlanta Falcons at the New Orleans Saints. The New Orleans Saints are six-point home favorites over the Falcons. A 42 is the total in that one as we sit right now. Uh, the Falcons, Calvin Ridley, stepping away for mental health uh, issues, wants to get right in uh, feeling like he's not really waking up every day and and feeling good about himself. And listen, all power to him. Hopefully he is able to get that done. But what this definitely does is make the, a bad Falcons team much, much worse. If we're just talking about strictly from a gambling standpoint here, um, Kyle Pitts is now your number one receiver stepping in as a rookie and as a you know pseudo tight end, basically a wide receiver at this point. Uh, on the Saints side of things, they lose Jameis Winston for the season. Michael Thomas announces that he's not going to make it back this season either. And so you have some flux going on there with the Saints as well. They're going to run with Trevor Simeon for the rest of the season, not making a move at the trade deadline at all. Brad, listen, Jameis Winston was not doing anything amazing this year, but he also wasn't doing anything horrible to lose them games. My question to you is do you think Trevor Simeon can basically step in and kind of just be Jameis Winston? Like, you don't have to be a, a superstar with the way this defense is playing, and his defense is, is really, really good. You don't have to be an all-star, but you just don't have to be a dud. Can you just be somewhere in the middle, yeah, and I, this team I, can probably win a decent amount of games still through the rest of the year? Yeah, I think um, – I think- they the Saints probably showed us they believe that Simeon or or uh, Taysom Hill can fill that role, right? They, they've got an elite offensive line and they've got that elite defense that you mentioned, and yeah, they weren't they were running the ball at a very high rate and they don't really ask the quarterback to do too much at the minute. Um, as for this game specifically, um, I would say this is this is another horrible spot. You know, a bit a bit like the Bengals last week. This is this is the Saints coming off a, a home home dog win against their you know their their biggest rivals, Super Bowl champion. They got the outright win, and now you've got the sort of lowly Falcons coming to town with with one weapon. So <laughs> I would say that as as we saw with the Jets and the Bengals, sometimes you can just throw the matchups out the window, right? There, there's no one on the Jets that can cover those those receivers. But if you're just really flat, sometimes it doesn't matter. Now I would also say the matchup says that the Falcons shouldn't score any points at all, right? I don't think they can mm-hmm. block the Saints defensive line. They've got one person who can get open, which is Pitts. Um, and if you've got a good cover corner, last week, you know, they, the the Panthers put Gilmore on Pitts a lot. They could just do that with Lattimore and probably take him out of the game. And then like I, I don't really know. I don't really know how the the Falcons are moving the ball. Um, and then, as I say, this this Saints offensive line should just maul this Falcons defensive line. They should be able to run the ball for five yards a clip, um, screens and and open play action off that. So, in theory, this should be probably a, a Saints and under game to me. Um, but you've you've got to be careful with this spot. Um, so yeah, it's it, it's it's another tricky one. Yeah, as we're as we're sitting here, a total of. Of 42, but even with a total of 42, I understand that's low by today's standards in the NFL. I actually got on this one a little earlier when it was a little bit higher and took the under on this thing. Uh, I'm with you. Like, it's what we've also seen from Matt Ryan, and you mentioned, like, Matt Ryan's kind of come back down to earth as well. Last year, everybody was writing him off for dead, but if you looked at his advanced metrics, he was actually pretty good. He was actually he played a pretty decent season. He has certainly shown every bit of his age. He is certainly playing. Uh, every bit of the old guy quarterback back there right now. And I think the Saints defense can cause some pretty big problems for this Falcons team as well. And then with Trevor Simeon, I don't think he's going to be bad per se, but I certainly don't think he's going to be good either. And you do wonder about just what this Saints offense brings outside of the one dimension, which is Alvin Kamara, right? I mean, this is a, this is a, as one dimensional of an offense and one dimensional as a team as we will, we see in a really, really long time. I mean, there's just no weapons at the wide receiver position at all. And so with that, I take a look at this and yeah, it's a bad, it's a fairly bad saints offense, but the defense is really, really good. And they're getting a bad Falcons offense and a bad Falcons defense. And so that certainly has me leaning towards the Saints for sure. But I am on the under in this thing. I think even at 42, I feel comfortable with it. I got it 43. Even at 42, I do feel comfortable with it. But um, if it got a little bit lower than that, I don't think I would go in that direction. But I do feel like the, the Saints defense is going to pretty much neutralize anything that this Falcons team can do.